One of the things I lose sight of with this is how painful and hard it was early on dealing with my kids. And the issue with that is, is that when you're in the midst of it and you're trying to figure out how to deal with the situation, how to connect with your kids, how to minimize a lot of what is going on around them, it's really tough. And you know, now I'm in a situation where those groundhog days aren't really an issue. I mean, when the kids come back, they're fine. I mean, I've, I've worked it to enough to where though there are still impacts, it's nowhere near how catastrophic it was years ago. So it's kind of a two part issue because once you get to that point, things get easier and things do get easier with time. As you start making progress and you start seeing victories, things get a hell of a lot easier. The problem is getting to that point because it is a painful process to get there. So sometimes for me, it's easy to say, just act a certain way. I mean, just, just be stable, be consistent and everything will get better. And, and that is true and that will happen. It's just really hard when you're in the midst of it and you're not necessarily seeing the victories or you're not necessarily seeing the improvements, it makes it really tough because you still have the fear that the alienation that your ex is trying to do and all the different stories are gonna be believed by your kids, by the courts, by everybody. And realistically, the best way to approach this is focus, I mean, kind of go backwards. The, the first thing is with your kids. If your ex is saying something and your kids are not parroting that, then that right there is a good foundation to set, right? I mean, it's, it's another thing if your ex is saying something and then your kids are also saying the same thing and willing to say that to court people or evaluators and stuff like that. So the number one priority is revamping the relationship you have with your kids. I've said this before, but if you've made mistakes in the past, you need to start working on that immediately. You need to interact with your kids or apologize or make amends or however you want to say it, you want to basically approach it to say, look, you know, I'm going to tap the mat. We're going to start over. We're going to hit reset. We're going to try to do saying things a little different. Now that takes time. If you do have that problem, you still have to put in the time and effort and not respond negatively whenever they're testing you, whenever they don't really believe what's really going on or what you're trying to say is going on, you're going to have to prove it to them and you're going to have to prove it to them time and time and time Again, now that's really tough whenever they're poking you in the eye and, and court dates are coming up and your ex is telling people all kinds, you know, you're hearing through the grapevine, your ex is telling people all kinds of different stuff that the kids don't want to be with you. And, or maybe they're just saying it to you. Maybe they're saying, little Johnny told me he doesn't want to come to you to see you anymore. Well, and I've said this before, but if little Johnny is happy when he's with you, then they can say whatever the hell they want. And if they're trying to alienate the, uh, alienate the child against you, there's a good chance that they're going to say whatever the hell the other parent needs them to say to basically stabilize their environment. Their kids are doing that. So only really take into account what's going on if your kids are saying it to you too. If they're saying, I don't want to be here, I'd rather be with mommy or I'd rather be with daddy, that's an area of concern and that's something you have to work on. And that's when therapy is important and just consistently building that relationship with your kids. And, and it's hard because you get that because you know your ex is fighting you. Then you see your kids basically being surrogates for the other parent. And it's really hard not to react. I, I reacted, right? I mean, I'm not saying that I was this utopian, you know, guru master where I was able to go, well, now little Johnny, I still want to be with you too. You know, I mean, it's hard not to get angry. And, but it doesn't help because every time that you do, every time that you do get angry around the kids, to their, in their mind, it's validating their version of, or what their version of reality they're being told. And it makes them think that maybe it is true. So you have to really work on that to make sure that they don't fall into that, to make sure that they realize that you're not the monster that you're being portrayed to be. Now, for me, the trouble with this is that as I was doing it, I was feeling like, oh my God, I'm beating my head against the wall. I'm not making any progress. The kids aren't really changing. Every time they come back, it's like a groundhog day effect where everything that we've done has been lost. In my earlier videos from when this channel first started, a lot of times I talk about looking for those micro improvements, those little micro victories. 
And the reason I say that is because it's really hard when you're trying to look at the big picture or well, maybe not whenever you're actually too close to it and you're not looking at the big picture, you can't see those improvements. And those seeing just a slight improvement is crucial in helping you get move to the next level to, to keep moving on. Like I said, for me, I wasn't seeing those micro victories. And on top of that, I was thinking, oh dear God, this is going to be a nightmare for God. What was it at the time? I mean, I got six years left until all the kids are done. So, well, 12 years. I was thinking, oh my God, this is going to take over 12 years. The kids aren't going to realize what's been going on until they're way in their 20s or 30s or even later. And it's excruciating when you're trying when you're going through this constantly and you're dealing with this stress and anxiety it, it beats you down and it was beating me down guys i mean i'm this isn't this is not an easy thing and it wasn't an easy thing it was there was a lot of times where i would just be so drained and so just devastated by what was going on that i was like man is this am i ever going to see an improvement the thing is you will see an improvement and as soon as your kids start to feel as soon as your kids start to feel the shift then things get better in the past when there would be well let me back up in the past when it was just the normal transition time when it was like i have the kids every wednesday and thursday mom has them every monday tuesday and we rotate weekends so it's two two what five i think i get confused on it sometimes but it would feel every wednesday that the reset had ha that had been pushed and i'd have to start over the way I approached, initially the way I approached that is tried to lay the groundwork right off the bat. Whenever they walked in the door, it's like, hey, this is the way things are in my house. Huge, colossal mistake. If you're struggling with this, give them time to accl acclimate. If they're pushing your buttons, just try to ignore it. Take a deep breath. Wait until the next day before you start trying to implement something. Because remember, they're going through a lot of stress and anxiety too. And if you do anything to, to hit their trigger points, it destroys the entire time. My experience on that is if I did the, you know, this is the way it's going to be in my house type thing on transition day, the entire period was toast. If I was lucky, maybe by the weekend, things would calm down. When I started just taking a little bit of break, break on the transition day, not being so stern on things, typically the next day things were fine. Now, the other caveat on this is now I'm at the point where there is no difference. I Now, whenever the kids go to their mom for a couple of weeks during the, not during the summer, but during like uh, Christmas break or anytime there's an extended period, when they walk back through the door, it's like they never left. And that is what you're going to get to. It takes time. It took me probably about a year, maybe a year and a half to really get to that point. But it's like, you know, you put in the work. You make those those little improvements that grow into bigger improvements, and then you reap the benefit from it. It's kind of like everything in life, right? I mean, anything that you work at, anything that you put a lot of effort into, it grow, you're going to see a benefit from it. It's whenever you blow it off, or you don't put the effort into it, or you do a half-assed job, that's when things get really complicated. Now, the benefit, hopefully, that you guys have with this is that you're not entering this thinking, oh my God, this is never going to get better. It's going to be horrible, which is what I was in, right? Hopefully with my story, you can say, okay, well, if I follow this pattern, pattern, there's a really good chance that things are going to calm down quickly. And what I will say is I've gotten a lot of feedback from people that following hybrid, no contact, absolute thinking and black hole thinking has really helped them. And they've seen improvements relatively quickly. So, you know, quickly doesn't mean a day or two, right? Quickly means probably a week's month, you know, maybe a few months. But what I'm saying is, is that this is a proven methodology that has results. So if you're struggling in the beginning of this and you're just going, oh dear God, is this ever going to get better? It is, but it takes work. Just the same thing. If I, if I would have just, I could have done a couple different things. I could have had no boundaries and just let the kids do whatever the heck they wanted. And I don't think I would be where I'm at today. It was a balance, right? I had to give a little and set some boundaries. The thing is what I will tell you, especially like with my youngest, when I would set boundaries, she would push really hard and she would get really angry. And it was like she was testing me. It's like, are you really, are you really going to be consistent? And as soon as the consistency was there, attitude changed and she calmed down and felt better. And it wasn't easy, right? I mean, it would have been a heck of a lot easier for me to say, you know what, forget it. But what I will tell you is putting in the work is absolutely worth it. It, it, it pays off. You're, you will start to see results. This nightmare doesn't last forever 
Granted, it has a tendency to morph into different ways as you're progressing along, but it, it gets easier as you go. And as you, but basically the bottom line is, is as you build a better relationship with your kids and things mellow out, things get a heck of a lot better. The threats of the alienation doesn't, doesn't work. The threats of little Johnny wants to live with me is off the table because little Johnny's not going to really say that. And that's really the key. It's just really hard getting to that point. So I, I, the main reason I want to mention this is I know a lot of times, I mean, where I'm at now, things are really stable. So it's, it's when I say certain things, I know that it can seem like, wait a minute, you know, how in the hell am I ever going to get to that point? And my point is I was at your point. I was at that point where I'm like, oh my God, is this ever going to get better? Am I just wasting my time? Should I just give up? And I, this is the way I felt. There were times where I was like, holy crap, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I should have just let, let the ex take the kids to out of state, you know, given her all the money, and I just wouldn't have this constant, this battle. The thing is, is once you can get through the battle and you stabilize things, oh my God, things get so much better. And the effect that the ex has on you, it pretty much just fades away. There's still things, stupid little things that the ex does that, that you know, I mean, they're going to do whatever they're going to do. Does it bother me the way it did four or five years ago? <laughs> Absolutely not. It, you know, I would even know, I'm not even sure if I would even say it's even annoying. It's probably annoying, but it's not like I, I really get wrapped up about it. And, that, and that's really the key. So on that, if you're struggling with this, I hope this gives you a little bit of hope. If you want to talk about it, put it in the comments below. If you like the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell notification. So YouTube will actually tell you about videos because otherwise it won't. I'm noticing that with some of the channels that I've subscribed to that I didn't get the net bell notification. It's like seven months later. It's like, Hey, remember this person? It's really annoying. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, I will chat with you on the next video. Take care. Bye.